Heaven of Tales from West Gardena, Maine. It's still snowing out there. This is a weird match, April time frame. Anyway, we're all out here being good to each other, reaching out to our neighbors, having a good time, but staying separated and staying kind. That's the key here. Anyway, uh, I got to tell you a story. Mother and I got in that car, well, got in the truck, and we decided we were going to go visit some foreign land. We were going to go to Callis, Maine. All excited, Mother says, I want to go on to Callis. I haven't been to coast for a while, so we got on that Route 9. Used to be called the airline. That was an exciting ride back in the day. It was all humpy and curvy. Then DOT got involved, the Department of Transportation. They smoothed it out, straightened her out. Now it's not a thrill ride. Used to be called the airline because you got airborne four or five times between, between Brewer, Maine, and Callis. Now it's just a straight shot. Well, we whistled down there in no time at all. We come whistling into Callis, and as we did, we saw a big sign. All gold lamay, wicked smart looking sign, big shocker of a sign that said, Welcome to Callis. I said, Look at that, mother. We're in Callis already. She goes, Don't be such a nummy. It ain't Callis. It's Calais, you moron. I said, Well, geez, mother, I, I don't think so. It might be Calais on the other side of the pond, but over here, it's Callis. Oh, no, she said. We argued all the way into town. We finally get into the center of town. And I pulled over the side of the road because I saw a local fella strolling along the sidewalk. I pulled right over next to him, put my window down on the truck, waved him over the truck, and I said, uh, excuse me, my wife and I are having an argument about where we are. Could you come over here and, and, and just say it real slow so she'll understand it? Sure, he says. So he come over and he leaned in the window of the truck, looked right at Mother, and he goes, Duncan Donuts. <laughs> well, you got to ask the right question. We've gone over this before. Take care of each other out there. Yeah. Welcome to day 12 of Tales from West Garden of Maine. It's still snowing. And you might notice them in the woods. Mother said 80 feet at the fire pit, one and a half. She said, you gotta go deeper in the woods. Here I am. I don't know what I'm gonna do to camp out for the evening. I hope it don't snow all night. Anyway, we're taking care of each other. I hope you are. I'm sure you are. You're in Maine, taking care of other Maine. Anyway, I gotta tell you a quick story about Mother and I. We took a trip to Ireland, went to Dublin, had a good time. If you've never been to Ireland, when this thing all gets over, you've got to do it. Ireland's one heck of a nice place. The Emerald Isle. We had a great time. Mother went shopping. And I spent my time in the pubs. Yeah, had a great time. I was in there one day. Something weird happened. A fella from Texas came in. And big strapping fella. Stood right in the middle of the pub. Didn't make a sound. Put his hands on his hips. Stared everybody down till nobody was talking. Then he said... I know you fellas there in uh, Ireland think you're heavy drinkers. I've read about it. I'll tell you right now, I'm from Texas. I can outdrink anybody in the place. I'll make a bet. I got 500 American dollars. I'll put it right on the bar. If there's any man here that can drink 10 pints of Guinness without stopping, that's their money. If they can't do it, or they spill any, they got to pay me $500. Everybody kind of talked about it. Jesus, 10 pints of Guinness get $500. That's a pretty good deal. Well, Oh, but geez, that's a lot of beer all the once. Guess not. So they all kind of sat back, went doing what they're doing. All of a sudden, this one little guy jumped off a stool, runs out of the bar. Half an hour lady comes right back in, walks off the Texan who was sitting there having a drink, tapped him on the knee, couldn't reach any higher. He goes, uh, is the bet still on? You know the idea of drinking 10 pints of Guinness all the once. The Texan looked him up and down and said, are you kidding? You're a little runt. You think you can drink 10 pints of Guinness without stopping? Little fellow says, I know I can. All excited. Well, the Texan put the 10 pints of Guinness on the bar, put $500 in. the end. He said, you drink all 10 pints without spilling the drop. That money's yours. The little fellow marched right along, fired him down, went right after another. All 10 gone. Grabs the money, starts out of the pub. Texan caught up with him at the door and he said, hey, that was impressive. I couldn't even do that. And, and, and it's your money. But I gotta ask you one question. Where did you go when you left the pub for half an hour? Little fella kind of shifted his feet. He said, well, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't sure I could do it. I went next door and practiced. 
That's twisting the knife there. Take care of each other. Yeah. Welcome to day 13 of Tales from West Garden of Maine. I'm here sitting down to a fresh pancake mother just made. Yeah. Got my coffee cup from the USS Boston. I got some maple syrup to go on that. Ooh, 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 on that pancake made by Matt Dernley, my classmate from Monmouth Academy, 1966. Matt, pretty smart, went to the University of Maine, studied mathematics. But he had his moments in the fifth grade. He was sitting in the front row. Teacher was going on and on about polynomial this and that. And Matt wasn't getting it. He had that glazed look in his eye. If you ever meet Matt, you'll recognize it. Anyway, uh, teacher said, Matt, you ain't getting the math, are you? And he said, no, I'm not. No? <gasps> no? He says, well, what can I do to help you understand it? Well, what if I made it applied? Put it into context of something you do every day. Would that help? He said, yeah, would, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, what do you do every day? Well, right now we're cutting and selling firewood towels. Oh, good, I got a firewood example. Let's say firewood was $10 a car and you buy $40 worth of firewood. How much firewood you got? Matt thought for many. He said, you got three and a half cord. Teacher said, no, that's not right. He said, I know it's not right, but they all do it. Yeah, there you have it. Hey, be kind to each other, support each other. We all need it, yeah? Welcome to day 14 of uh, Tales from West Gardner, Maine. My friend John Mash just left. We didn't have any contact. He left a bag of cooked, fresh Maine crab just caught on, off the coast of Maine. We're having a decent time here, but it got me to thinking. You know, I've always thought, and I don't want to disparage anybody else out there. You're all wonderful people, but I got to tell you, being a Maine, I've always thought that Maine women make the best wives, and I'll tell you why. It's because no matter how bad things get, <laughs> they seem worse. And on top of that, they're wicked focused. I mean, when a Maine woman gets an idea in the head, get used to it. It ain't going anywhere. I'm just cracking these shells here. That main idea is sticking in her head and she's gonna make it happen. Now, I'll give you a good example. When my Uncle Willie was passing away, he, he was, uh, this was a few years ago, he was quite ill. They had moved his bed into the room right next to the kitchen so his wife Emma could prepare his meals and take them easily right back and forth there without going up and downstairs. Well, anyway, Willie was laying there drawing a, maybe what could have been his last breath. And as he drew a breath, he smells something emanating from the kitchen. He goes, Emma, what's that you cooking? She goes, it's an apple pie, Willie. Oh, he says, you know I love apple pie. Can I get just a little piece? And she says, no, it's for the wake. When, another, <laughs> when a mean woman gets an idea to hit, it's there forever.